Welcome back to Studio Chatter. You get a text message that looks normal enough, but if you click on that link, you could put yourself in a big mess. Say hello to Mike Olson. We know Mike because of his years of working on Fiesta Days. He is also a 30-year expert in cyber forensics. Mike, is life really scary out there? Life is actually very scary out there, but, but not so much that you need to panic and go into your shell. You just need to be cautious. Okay. Um, the intro, though, it said click on the link. So just opening the email, is that just as scary as clicking on the link in the email? Okay, so so that's a great question, Angie. Actually, it's not because, I mean, we all we all get emails. For example, I've got, I got an email the other day from Amazon that said your account's been temporarily lost. And I thought, nah, this doesn't sound right. So I looked at it, and in the, in the, to, or in the from section, it was from some random number that is dot com. And then I looked, then if I if I hovered my mouse over the link that it wanted me to click on, again, going to some random website that wasn't associated with Amazon at all. But it was very cleverly disguised because it had the Amazon logo in it and it, it looked pretty official. However, as you started reading through it, you saw some telltale signs of what to look for in a phishing scam or, or an email scam. No, the language is notoriously poor. Instead of we're, W-E apostrophe R-E, it was W-E-R-E. -E. And typically the sentences are not formed properly. They're not punctuated correctly. So those are some telltale signs. Another telltale sign on a, a phishing scam or email scam is urgent. Your account's going to be locked within the next 24 hours. You must respond now. Well. We all hate to think that we're going to get locked out of Amazon or Facebook or whatever it is we're trying to go to. So the, we fall prey to this panic that, oh, I need to respond right now. If you think there's something wrong with your account on Amazon or Facebook or wherever, go to the normal web page that you log into. Go to Amazon.com, go to Facebook.com or wherever and log in that way versus clicking on a link in an email. Oh, and for the record, Windows technical support is never going to call you and tell you there's a problem with your computer. <laughs> please, please don't fall prey to that. I can't tell you how many times I've had to fix computers or help friends and family through a situation where, well, they told me something was wrong with my computer. I needed to just click, type this into my browser and they could take over for me. Yeah, well, they've taken over for you. They've installed all types of malware. They can now track what you're typing on your keyboard and all things like that. So. Windows support is never one. going to call you. <laughs> I did that one. It Please was a pop-up, though. Oh, no. yeah. yeah. It was a pop-up that said, like, something's wrong, like, download this. Yeah. Right. You know. Okay, I fell for it. So so did you just start over from ground zero? Were you able to I called my up? IT guy and had him log in, and then he cleaned up the mess that <laughs> we yeah. had accidentally made. There, there <laughs> were some actually some very nasty little programs that can get installed on your computer from thing from links like that or from from scams like that where they they have a, what they call a, a keyboard tracker and they can actually log or keyboard logger uh, they can actually monitor every stroke you put on in on your keyboard so if you're going to your banking account website and you put in your password guess what they not only get your login credential they also have your password credentials and then they're in and then they own you so are there scary things out there? Yes. Do you need to be scared about them? No, but you do need to be very cautious and, and use some, some good judgment. Be skeptical. You know, healthy skepticism is not a bad thing. Wow. What do you think it is about a pandemic that uh, gets those predators online um, for, for frauds or trying to take money or take advantage of, of people and their, and their goodwill? Maybe something that could look like a donation that isn't. You know, Natasha, I, I think that's a very good question. Uh, I think it's it's at the base of our of our psyche of our of our personalities, and that's fear. You know, we we are afraid of, of being uh, caught up in this pandemic pandemic of being infected. And if there's a way that we can help others, we also generally feel compassion. So we say, "Wow, this looks like a way I could go help somebody." Well, chances are, when you go to click on one of those websites or or respond to one of those emails, they want you to wire money or send cash or buy gift cards and send them because it's easier for us to cash them here than dealing with international uh, monetary funds, things like that. 
they're they're all they're all scams. I mean, never would you send cash to somebody you just got an email from. You know, the, the Prince of Nigeria does not have 20 million waiting for you if you'll just send him five. <laughs> you know, or just, Publishers Clearinghouse. I know they're kind of legit, but yeah, we have had family members that keep buying subscriptions because they're seven thousand dollars closer to the well, jackpot. Yes, if you read the fine print on Publishers Clearinghouse, it says. A purchase does not increase your chance of winning, and a purchase is not required to enter. You know, so okay, do, I need to blow that up. Skater, they do skate around <laughs> the law by that. But, but Natasha, back to your question. I think you know, I think in general we all want to help each other. We all want to be good, and, mm -hmm. and so we're thinking, hey, if if we can if we can help somebody, let me do it. You know, you brought up brought up this thing of COVID nineteen, and and there seems to be a large influx of people saying. Hey, we've got a cure for for coronavirus. Hey, if you'll if you'll donate to us, we can find a cure faster. Well, the bottom line is you're not going to hear about some miracle cure via email or some text message. Guess what? You're going to hear from it from you know the CDC. You're going to hear it from the government, the Department of Justice, from your local doctor. You're not going to hear about it from an email that pops up in your email box one day. So, you know, and you know so. The, if a cure is found or when a cure is found, you'll hear it through official channels. Don't fall prey to somebody who's selling a silver toxin that's or a silver tonic that's going to solve your problem. Sorry. Mike, I wanted to ask, do we need to make sure the URL so that the that the, is that what it's called? The URL yeah. right up on top? Uh -huh. Are there special keys that we need to make sure? Like HTTP is there? Does that matter? Make it a legit Perfect. service. They say that's a good question. You know, if you're looking at anything that is that is uh, banking related or or has anything to do with a credit card, you should always see HTTPS at the front. S stands for secure. It's a, it's a secure layer, and anybody who's doing legitimate business <clears throat> will be using an HTTPS uh, beginning at the end of their at the beginning of their website. Okay. And so yes, that's a very good thing to watch for. You know, as as long as we're talking about computers too. Um, it's you need to you need to be diligent. You need to have a a some type of a virus protection on your computer. Uh, you need to make sure that it's up to date. And and yeah, it's going to cost you a little bit of money. But what's your time worth? You know, if if you get hacked or if your computer goes down for a week and you do a business on it or you've got a bunch of personal stuff on it and you're down for a week, yeah, invest in invest in a good virus protection program for your computer. And there are Okay, and I have a question. Go. Yeah, I have a question about passwords and kind of that kind of stuff. So <laughs> I have a tendency to keep the same ones and rotate it with how I use oh, it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, is it best like when you go to sign up with something and they give you this is a strong password and they give you an option or putting in your own? Is there any more safety out of one or the other? Absolutely. Uh, chances are, Angie, and I, I won't try and guess your password, but chances are your passwords that you're using are somehow somehow associated with personal information about you, whether it's your birth date, whether it's your kids' names, whether it's your anniversary date, whether it's your address okay. or whatever. You, you're grinning. I must have hit on maybe three or four of them for you. Uh, <laughs> but but we all do it. We all, and Natasha, Natasha, you're taking the fifth on this. But we we all do it because it's a pain in the butt to remember passwords. And I say that it's a pain in it's a pain to remember passwords. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the best thing I can suggest is get a password manager. Have it on your phone and and have different passwords for different websites. You know, if if for example on this Amazon spoof that I got, if I put in my credentials and it happened to be the same password that they my bank account uses, well guess what? They've got my they've got my user account, most likely, and my password. And then they can just start going rampant on any information they have collected on me to try and see if, if that password I provided will crack something. So get a password manager and and use different passwords. You know, I suggest to people, maybe, let's say you're going to go to Amazon. You may put in the first three letters of Amazon, AMA, and then the same six-letter string or something at the end. Then when you go to Gmail or Google, you may put in G O O, and then that same six letter string, so that it's easier for you to remember, but it's unique to each website. 
Hmm, I like that idea. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you you can get a a password manager like something like LastPass or Keeper that you can run on your phone as well as run on your computer, on your browser. And I would just suggest you start moving your passwords to a good password manager and keeping them completely unique. Yeah. Well, I think it's important. Also, to probably change things often, especially yeah. now during a, a vulnerable time, you know, so many people that maybe don't spend uh, so much time on the internet or on their phones that are on it more now than ever um, to make sure that you are keeping track of those passwords, that you are updating them often. Um, Mike and I also know each other from a professional aspect. And, and this week, in fact, we would be in Florida at one of the conferences we that we normally yes. attend. So, so it, it's kind of interesting to be touching on all of these things and, and the, the internet traffic, uh, you know, that's going on right now with, with our kids even. You know, I have a Zoom conference today or, you know, everybody's on Zoom or everybody's on their phones. Everybody's doing their banking. Everybody is online. So these are such, such good pieces of advice. Um, because the, you know, the FTC, um, the CDC, all, all, everybody's giving these guidelines, but it's just so important to be wary of what might be going on behind the scenes, right? Exactly, Natasha. And another thing I might add here, when, when possible, I would set up what's called two-factor authentication. That means you have to have two pieces of information to be able to get into your account. You not only have to know your username, you have to know a password. And the second one is maybe something else that's unique to you. You know, Apple's Apple's uh, Face ID is a great two-factor authentication method because you have to have a password to set up Face ID, but then Face ID is another another method of authentication to get you into websites. And m many many websites are accepting that, and will have a prompt that you can just click and say, "Use my Face ID," and you, then you're just in as a second form of authentication. So, if you have a chance to set up two-factor authentication, I would highly encourage you to do so. Yes. Mike, are you aware of any classes or websites where people that would like to know more information could go to? Are there really helpful tips or? You know, Stacey, there, I know the Department of Justice has some, has some information out there, and that's just going to be at uh, doj.gov. Okay. And, and you should be able to find uh, articles out there about, I, I don't have a, an exact link, but there should be articles out, out there about phishing scams, email scams. Things safe on the internet and things like that. Um, let's see. I, I had another note here I wanted to say. Um, yeah, don't don't reuse your passwords. You know, try and try and cycle through new passwords. It's tempting to want to reuse them because that way you don't have to remember them. You don't have to get into your password manager, or you can just flip over your keyboard and look at that post-it note that says, "Oh yeah, I use this one. I can use this one now." Um, <laughs> try and, and she's laughing again. I'm not, I must be hitting on a few. Do chords with her here. <laughs> I know. Worse. What about what about you know your even your your Wi-Fi router? You know, I I'm hearing that that even teenagers are are down at the park exchanging. You know, whose Wi-Fi turns off at 10 p.m. and midnight, and here's the login. And um, how important is it to update those things also? You know, most most Wi-Fi routers that are that are that are current today are come with some pretty good security set up by default. You can certainly go in and turn on additional security measures with each one. It's it's a little bit technical, but you should be you should go something off of just the default. You'll always obviously want to change the administrator password with any router that any Wi-Fi router that comes because it's just going to be T A S S W Zero R D. You know, change it. You know, put something else in there. <laughs> or you, you can actually, <laughs> mm, yeah. You can also hide what's called the SSID or the the address that the wireless router broadcasts, so that unless you've got some pretty sophisticated equipment and some programs, you don't see it. So if somebody's driving by, they're not going to see Natasha's home or Bex Bex bungalow or you know Angie's crew here <laughs> as they as they go by. You know that may be the it. only thing I'm doing right. Mine isn't named. Um, maybe not. Oh. <laughs> wow, that's not confession time Murphy, here, Dan. <laughs> just, just go turn off the SSID broadcast on it, you know, so that it's not being, not being seen out there. And, and just, just quickly on another note, I know we're probably close on time. Um, if you've got kids at home, and even if you don't, if you've got kids, and they're they're school age kids, 
you need to be having candid conversations with your kids about what they're seeing and what they're viewing on their phones. Mm-hmm. Okay, if we, ta- if we take a look at the internet, statistically, the two largest uses of the internet are for genealogy and pornography. Okay, pretty diametrically opposed as far as uh, most people's moral value or compass, if you will. So chances are you and or your kids have stumbled across something they shouldn't have seen or they didn't really want to see. If they're afraid to come talk to you because they might get in trouble because guess what, mom, I saw this and they're, they're, they're ashamed or they're scared to talk to you, that's not a healthy environment. So have, have hard conversations with your kids and say, okay, what are you seeing? There are a ton of apps out there on phones that kids get in trouble with. And, and I could start naming them, but I'd leave some off so we just won't. But, but be aware and have, have a very frank and candid conversation with your kids and say, okay, let me see your phone. What are you doing? What, what, is, it, what is this app? Why do you use it? And things like that. Absolutely. <laughs> no, those are, those are all so important. And again, during these times when people are using technology more than ever, whether it is for school whether it work, whether it's for entertainment, whether it's, you know, somebody trying to get donation money, just, you know, be so aware of what is going on with technology. Yes. Thanks, yes. Mike. This was a lot of helpful information. It's a good yes. reminder. And I think we get into it every day and we just forget or we don't pay attention I, I, to the strength of things. I think we get going so fast sometimes that we say, oh, okay, let me click on this. It's like, boom. You're somewhere, you've seen something or gone somewhere you didn't mean to or you didn't intend to, or you shared information that you didn't mean to or intend yeah. to. Spot so, on. Well, thank you so, so much for your time. You bet. You bet. Thank you. I'm going to go change all my passwords. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> and, Angie, let me know if you need a recommendation on a, on a password manager. I can help you out. So. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thanks, you all. I appreciate you taking the time to chat yeah, with me this evening. Thanks. It's been two months since the salons have been open. Is our wait over? We'll find out next on Studio Chatter. Studio Chatter.